with great pleasure, I say, welcome to this interesting 30 minutes program called Art and Leisure. We're going to spend the day in Accra. The Pan African Strategy and Policy Research Group had a brainstorming session there. One of the issues raised is the need to have a regular African Festival of Arts and Culture. It could be once a year or once every two years. My name is Chioma Okwara. I want you to recline your cushion as bring you details. 54 countries in Africa are about to experience new things. Scholars from different parts of the continent converged on Accra, in fact, in this room, to discuss the way forward for our beloved continent. The group focused on the economic and sociocultural aspects. My name is Ndafa Mishindaka. My name is uh, Diamond Ogidi. My name is Seth Abdoso. Some are consultants, some are lawyers, and some are lecturers, just to mention a few. They came from different nations for these three days meeting, which is at the instance of PANAFSTRAG. PANAFSTRAG is an acronym for Pan-African Strategy and Policy Research Group. This brainstorming session is in line with its mandate to bring about a more united and progressive Africa. They started by talking about the inclusion of the sixth region, in the African Union Charter. First, let's know the five regions in the AU Charter. We have ECOWAS, we have the Maghreb, which is the north, we have the East African Community, we have the SADEC, we have the UDAC. This group believes there's need for a sixth region. Why and to whose benefit, you may ask. AU, why do I form the African Union from AU? Decided that they need to bring all the other Africans who are not in the continent under the sixth region of Africa. Now, since it's the sixth region, it means that they recognize that they are Africans, but they are not living in the continent. So, what better word for us to do than to call them non resident Africans? The name non resident Africans for citizens who live outside the continent was not adopted without much debate. Caribbean people, for example, who have Indian heritage and black heritage, how will those people, how do we include those people in this non-residential area, in the whole concept of non-residential concept? Because if you look at persons in places like Trinidad and Tobago, for example, you have persons who are Syrian and African, have both Syrian uh, heritage and African heritage because of the intermixing that has taken place over the years. So would these people fall under the same category that we are trying to capture? And so they what do they call them for now? They're just Caribbean. They just, that's the thing. They okay. just like to be, to, to be known as Caribbean. Do they want to be associated with Africa? They identify with both. For example, in the Trinidadian situation, when they have their Diwali or Indian um, festivals, they, call, they, they do participate. The, the, yeah, they do the Indian thing, and when they have the, the other, you know, Shango, they call them African ancestry um, festivals, they participate in those as well. So let's put these groups up. We have the people from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. we have the people from uh, Africa who are living abroad, the people who were, whose grandparents were Africans, and they're also living abroad. The, we call those two groups of people non-residents. Is it more of the willingness to belong? Exactly. And not being put into classes as we have done. Yes. That's what we're trying to, you know, yeah. determining we want that something these to, people, yeah. you know, we want it to be all encompassing, exactly. I understand. Yes. But we are trying to determine, okay, you are African with maybe Russian yes. father, you know, kind of thing. And yes. I, I think if we did that now, because all these people, these groups that we have put on the board, yes, indeed, would belong. But at the end of the day, like has just been explained, they should decide, this is where I am going to be. You cannot dictate where you are to be born. And by virtue of uh, being born in Africa, or maybe any part of Africa or any part of Europe, uh, you, you, you are there because God has made it to be so. Let's take it like that. No, I have a child who's been born in Prague myself. Uh -huh. But this very particular child now, she's demanding to go to the listen to the birth country. You see, it, it, right. it gives me... Uh, okay. Is it suitable for us to call them non-residents 
or we continue with the Afro-Americans. If you're a non-resident African, you can call yourself whatever name you like in your country. afro you no Afro-European, afro this afro bulgarian yes but once you accept that you are non-resident you are uh, have african heritage then you will and you want to be you have to be, you want to be connected to africa then you become a non-resident african in the cis region of the african union that adopted other nations outside the continent now have a duty based on the african population that we have in their various countries so a country like haiti for example which recognizes its African connection, is an observer member of the African Union. To be sure that this is a good idea, questions were asked. In uh, advocating for, for a six region mm -hmm. in, to, to be part of the AU, what benefits will we be deriving from such an association? If you combine the economies of all the black people together. all over the world together, You'd be surprised. But the problem is that we are not trading with each other. We are not trading with each other. So all African countries look towards the EU or we look towards the United States. But we don't look at how, for example, Ghana can trade with Barbados, especially with the black population that is 95% of Barbados, or with Jamaica, or with Haiti. We do not. You can penetrate anywhere. If you have people in strategic places like that, you can get information from them uh, what to do, how to go about it. You can get it easily. That's on security. Then the issue of economy is there. In fact, you can, you can gain much more. The problem of inferiority complex is brought to the fore. If you, you, you are from my Cam Cameroon and you come to Namibia and then somebody an expert comes uh, to, 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 for, from America, uh, a white person, then I forgo, I am likely to go for a white person, then the person, the, 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 the person from uh, Africa. Many have risen to the occasion, though. I want to tell you what happened to us in the bank sometimes. Yeah. Uh, we were on a queue, and this white guy just came and passed, mm -hmm. and went, and they wanted to serve him. One of my colleagues, who is just a small girl like that, dragged the guy by the neck mm -hmm. and when I pushed him at the back there, look, he was so embarrassed that he just left the bank. I did the same when I was at you. He, 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 he dragged him from the neck. Yeah. He said, you belong to this position. Yeah. Stand here. Yeah. You know, he could not believe it. You know, I, I did the same. I went to, 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 to the University of Zimbabwe. Uh, year 2002, year 2004, and we went to the listen to the supermarket. So I have only I was in the line mm. to 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 get just something, but I was in front of this uh, uh, couple white people, and they came, they put my this my trailer there, mm. and then they put well, they, they 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 get into the line before me. When I came, I said, Oh my God, this can only happen in Zimbabwe, but not in Namibia. Everybody else, they were looking at me, and I I take them out. I said, You cannot. Be, be safe before me because I was in the life. I will, you show me when to so, collect something. That is the, the inferiority complex that we have. More solutions are preferred. If we need to go to the diaspora to lure them to associate, we need to go along with the branding of Africa. In Nigeria, history as a subject itself is rarely taught now anymore in the schools. When we don't know where we're coming from, we really know, don't know where we are heading. And we need to start shaping that in our younger generation so that they don't end up growing up and they're feeling inferior, inferior and they don't want to associate with Africans. They are Africans and we should always be proud to be Africans. Welcome back. Things are looking up for Africa. Those are intellectuals discussing how the continent can make much more progress. There were more deliberations on the second day, so let's go back to the Trade Union Congress Conference Center in Accra, Ghana. The group took some time off to remember one of them who passed on recently. We are so rest in peace. The focus today is on global Africanism. Our Pan-Africanism should be moving toward global Africanism. We cannot have both resident Africans 
and non residents under this umbrella of global Africanism. And you cannot claim to be a global African organization. And once you say that, then whatever they are going to do, it now becomes easy for six regions to claim equal status with the other five regions. There is a request for slave memorial to be built in New York and Addis Ababa. A global intra-African trade is also being advocated by this group. The main purpose says to build a structure for institutionalizing an integrated global African trade area for boosting global intra-African trade, including the six region non-resident African communities. If you combine the economies of all the black people together. all over the world together, you'll be surprised. But the problem is that we are not trading with each other. We are not trading with each other. So all African countries look towards the EU or we look towards the United States. But we don't look at how, for example, Ghana can trade with Barbados, especially with the black population that is 95% of Barbados, or with Jamaica, or with Haiti. We do not. For us to have the global African trade in Africa, in any of the regions in Africa, would be a very good and wonderful development to Africa. For example, for someone in Ghana can take to, his, to the region where it is, uh, I mean, he can take to his own region or another region to sell his products and services. Like in Nigeria, you can, if we have um, those kind of markets. We can take them, to, like, we can have one in Kanu. The man in Aba can bring his own products to Kanu. Someone from Ghana brings his own. It's, I mean, it will be a very good, good um, development for us. Dr. Sandro Cheng Springer, a Kenyan who lives and works as a lecturer in Barbados, shared some lessons she learned at a conference. I went to the Arthur Lewis the so Arthur Lewis Centennial Conference in St. Lucia in the Caribbean. And this was a, a, a celebration of 100, he would have been 100 years next month. Uh, so they just started free to have a, celebra a conference in celebration of his achievements. Lewis was especially uh, um, interested with issues of social justice, for example, which I think is related to what we are discussing. Yeah. Interested in issues of human rights, interested in issues of, of basic needs. So his economics was always how to bring the person at the bottom, how to help the person at the bottom. Here's a summary of the second day's discussions. Today we're talking about the sixth region markets. And for the introduction, we have in line with the above, AU has taken initiatives to form the sixth region in the diaspora in Article 3Q of the Constitutive Act of the AU of 2003, inviting African diaspora to join its deliberative body as a sixth region. AU policies on intra-African trade and its strategic plan of action for CFTA, that's the Common Free Trade Area, and boosting intra-African trade with the UNECA and other international agencies has put in place the necessary framework for the 2017 deadline. Welcome back. If you're a young person watching this program, now you have an idea of how names are coined and how policies are formulated. More issues were brought to the table on the third day. Take a look. There should be a yearly or biennial festival of arts and culture with the full participation of all the 54 countries in the continent. Once we have the six region uh, being established or being accepted within the AU, uh, then uh, at the end of the day, uh, we will have the Color of Global African Festival of Art and Culture. So supposing we have done everything, groundwork, everything, and the festival, festival, the, the actual festival is going to take place. Do we like envision holding it in a country? or we're looking at having every country 
you know, do their own type of, uh, 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 but I think it's important. We need to uh, decide what we want. There are two ways to it. But first of all, what is this coming first of all? What is saying that this is that this coming first of this? African traditional music is dying. African traditional instruments are dying. Divide them. The country music we have from America, that some Africans even enjoy, they are traditional music. That's why they call it country music. The ones in Africa were allowing it to die. First act took place in Nigeria or Lagos, and then you have a Pana Fest taking place in Ghana. Okay. Uh, so it means we can easily organize it. But if uh, that is uh, our aim for now, then I would like us to look at uh, some other uh, points besides just organizing it. Are we organizing it for nothing or for organizing sake? Or are we organizing it in order to unite our people and then to make some economic gains out of it? Other issues were discussed and here's a summary. Teaching of the diaspora slash non-resident African history in Africa and African history to non-resident Africans. The proposal for the legal situation of the sixth region of non-resident Africans with respect to Article 3Q of the AU Constitutive Act. We plan to have equal status with the five regions, that's the creation of the sixth region, and the membership of the AU and representation in all the agencies and commissions of the African Union. This proposal is in particular to the sixth region and how to involve the sixth region just like we have all the five other regions of Africa. We also have the sixth region African markets. The proposal is for global intra-African trade within the framework of the AU continental free trade to boost intra-African sixth region businesses and trade within the, for non-residents to non-resident Africans. Also, to boost intra-African trade between resident Africa, Africans who are already in Africa, and those that are non-residents. To boost intra-African trade between residents and residents that is within Africa itself. And then intra-global African trade between residents and non-residents, private sector and communities. And secondly, to the affirmation, affirmative action through enabling national laws and regional policy for black to black economic business and trade with at least 25% of the businesses going solely to the blacks. And then we also have the program for festivals, which is centered around festivals for Africans. There is supposed to be a parade. The parade is of global African nations where you have people of different culture in different trucks and the plan is to move the trucks around Accra. It's supposed to hold on the 25th of May, which is the African Day, the Global African Day celebration. Move from one point to a major point where they converge and then they share all sorts of ideas and parade their culture, dressing and traditions. The plan is to have it at three points, one in Abuja, one in Accra and one in Widhok in Namibia. And then we also have the program for the Colo Fests, which we hope to experiment with the Pana Fests. We're going to work together with the University of Ligon, together with Panastra, who is the coordinating body. And so this will involve a festival of drums, dressing, um, hairstyles, all encompassing in terms of African tradition and culture, which will also have a colloquium which will be more related to those who are in the key research areas. And then the third one is the Children Festival, which we hope to have in three different regions, in the Caribbean, in South Africa, Southern Africa, in Namibia, and then in West Africa, in Ghana. To achieve all that has been deliberated on, Chinwezu, a Pan-Africanist scholar, gives a charge. We must go back to our mentality of thinking that the world is just a nice place where we can do whatever we like and enjoy ourselves. Until we recognize that we have enemies who are serious about getting rid of us, 
will not get serious. Our leaders will get serious. The scientists won't do a damn thing because the leaders will not give them the organization. It takes more than money to do research. Both North, South, North Korea and South Korea, what drove them to do what they did? They wanted their country to be safe from invaders and to be economically strong, to do something about, to prevent it from happening, invaders from taking the move after the Korean War. That is the fundamental mentality we have to change, that the world is not nice for us. And why we haven't done so in, five, in 100 years is a mystery, because Marcus Garvey told us all of this in the 1920s. All the political movements, of, he was the only one who analyzed our situation and told us the dangers we were facing. And he said, if you don't organize now your scientific power, your economic power, your military power, in another 200 years, two to 300 years, you'll be exterminated. And that was his prediction back in the 1920s. And we have not listened to him because we got sidetracked by all kinds of communist foolishness. This meeting has been adjudged a success. The topics that we have discussed are of concern to both resident Africans and non-resident Africans, including those who have been in the diaspora for the past 100 years, uh, 500 years or so. So we have discussed subjects that are of interest to the people themselves, really. So if AU or ECOWAS or any of these uh, international organizations are concerned with the people, actually with African peoples all over the world, then these are areas in which they must take some interest and see how some of these programs can be implemented. Some of the programs have already have been adopted at the UN level, for example. Some have been crafted by the AU themselves. And there are some that uh, we have developed on our own in order to bring the peoples of African descendants and the Africans' brothers and sisters together. So we expect that uh, these are areas that African Union, UN, and everybody must be interested in, and to assist as much as possible in making sure that uh, we have uh, an impact on the people that those programs are meant for. Members of this group have resolved to hit the ground running with outlined strategies. One of the discussions we have had is to look out for champions. Champions, individuals who are going to help us champion this course. So I am hoping that from here, if we have these action points, I, for example, should be able to contact some of these champions, you know, as my little contribution. We have uh, sessions of tripartite committees where government, labor, and employees meet regularly. Then also we have a direct channel where we make inputs into government economic policy and, and annual budgets. Now, these are issues, issues have come up that we can place on the table for discussion. Demand that we meet government one-on-one -on -one to, to reconsider the direction of our economy. Pan-African Strategy and Policy Research Group wants to see a continent where there is equity, justice, security, stability, and continuous progress. Wow, indeed, Africa has cerebral minds. Look forward to the actualization of those goals. Remember that art and leisure today came to you from Ghana. Many thanks to Panastrag. It's always my privilege bringing this program to you every week so let's do this again same time next week god willing please remember to visit our website to watch more episodes just visit www.artandleisure.com.ng we encourage you to always leave a comment <laughs> my name is chioma okmara love yourself love nigeria Thank you.